Hello, I'm Paul Single, Managing Director at City National Rockdale, and welcome to Economic Perspectives. Well, we've seen it. The GDP report for the second quarter was the most extreme decline that we've ever had in the history of this country. Official data goes back 70 years, but it still came nowhere close to what we saw in the second quarter. GDP fell by almost 33%. The previous biggest decline was a 10% decline in the first quarter of 1958. Then there was a pandemic going on at the time. It was what's known as the Asian flu. Same thing is happening this time around. But what makes this severe decline so impressive is that even pr private data that goes back on the US economy all the way to 1875, nothing comes close to touching the decline that we just saw. In this chart here, it shows the breakdown of the four major components of GDP. On the very far left, you can see the decline of overall GDP and then the four components. The majority of the decline happened by a drop in consumption. And this is important. Consumption makes up about two thirds of GDP. So the fact that people were required to stay at home for several weeks, or in some cases more than a month, really cut back on the amount of consumption most specifically in the service sector. And think about it, people did not go out to dinner, they did not go out to bars, they did not travel. They changed their behavior quite a bit and that's what caused the majority of the decline. That's followed by a decline in the investment portion of GDP. There, that fell back as a result of many of the closures of factories. The two other components of GDP actually were up and that sort of makes sense. Government spending was up and that's because of a mammoth amount of money from the federal government, because actually state and local governments actually fell a little bit, but it was the response by the federal government in terms of trying to mitigate the downside economic happenings of the economy is what helped out that sector. The other was trade. We imported less than we exported, and as a result, that was a slight positive. Now, when we talk about GDP falling almost 33%, it didn't mean that the economy fell by one third. That data is annualized. So it's much higher than what actually happened for the quarter. It's making the assumption that it would happen all year long, which it won't be. But when we take a look at the decline in GDP from the first quarter and the second quarter, you can see it fell 10.6%. In this chart here, it compares it to all the declines of all the other recessions since the end of World War II. The decline of this recession far exceeds the previous record of the 4% decline of the global financial crisis of a decade ago. But now take a look at this chart here, because what makes this decline even more impressive is the speed that it happened. This chart here shows the duration of all the recessions that we've had since the end of World War II. In this recession, it probably lasted only three months, February, March, and April much shorter than the average recession that we've had historically of 11 months. But that was the past. The question is the future. What is going to happen to this economy throughout the third quarter and the fourth quarter of this year? Well, fortunately, as we've said, we've seen a bounce back. We've already seen two record increases in the employment data. That's helped bring back the amount of people on the labor force by about a third of what was lost. We're also seeing big increases in consumption, most notably in the goods portion, where people are buying actual products. Both durable and non-durable sales are up above February levels. What's not up is the service sector, and that sort of makes sense. That's going out to dinner, that's travel, those sort of things. That hasn't fully rebounded, and it's important that it rebounds because the service sector makes up about two-thirds of all spending. But that will take time. And the reason why it will take time is that people need to feel comfortable going out into the public. Chairman Powell of the Fed has been very clear on that, that we will not have a full recovery until people can feel comfortable living the life that they had before the coronavirus. So that is a big indicator that we're following very closely in trying to figure out the path of this recovery. But this recovery is on a positive trajectory, both for the third quarter of this year and a fourth quarter of this year. Very strong growth is expected out of both of them. Then, when we get into 2021, we will still see strong growth, well above the trend of the last 10 years, but not nearly as strong as
is what we saw in the second half of this year. So we still have an awful lot of economic data coming out over the next few months while we're in this transition phase of seeing what data is very strong for the economy and what's not so strong. And it's important that we continue to watch this and report it to you monthly. Thank you for watching. I'm Paul Single, and I'll see you next month.